What do you mean by the term transistor biasing? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term transistor biasing? Well, let's find out. So, we all know for a fact that a particular BJT or a bipolar junction transistor is used for the purpose of amplifying a time varying signal. So, if we are giving a particular time varying signal like this onto a bipolar junction transistor, then we know for a fact that this amplifies this particular input signal like this. But, but this doesn't seem logical because just by using this BJT, this cannot just simply amplify the signal. Rather, here we observe that something has to be provided to this particular BJT so that this can boost or amplify this particular input signal. And therefore, for the purpose of amplifying this input signal, we give an external DC voltage over here like this. So, this simple external DC voltage that we provide to a bipolar junction transistor so that we can amplify a particular time varying signal is simply what you refer to as a biasing voltage. This is a biasing voltage that we give. And this process of applying a biasing voltage to a BJT in order to amplify a signal is simply what you refer to as transistor biasing. So this is why we need to bias a particular transistor. We bias a particular transistor so that we can help it to amplify a particular time varying signal. So now here let us now take a particular bipolar junction transistor. So here this is a particular bipolar junction transistor like this. So now let us now take this particular bipolar junction transistor in the common emitter configuration. Here this is the collector, this is the base and this is the emitter. So here let us take this as common. Then what we observe is that here we give the input voltage VBB. Let this be a resistance RB. So in such a case there will be a current flowing like this IB. This is the input part of this particular transistor, PJT transistor, in the common emitter configuration. And here we would have another voltage source here, VCC. Let this be RC. And then what we observe is that there would be a current flowing like this called IC. So here we have taken the common emitter configuration of this particular BJT because the common emitter configuration of a bipolar junction transistor is used for the purpose of amplifying a time varying signal. So that's why we've drawn the BJT in a common emitter configuration. So here this is VBE and this is VCE. So here what we observe is that BE is forward biased whereas CB is reversed biased. So here the parameters of the input set that is VBE and IB these contribute towards the input characteristics whereas the parameters on the output set that is VCE and IC these contribute towards the output characteristics of this particular transistor. So let us now plot the output cara of this particular BJT. So we know for a fact that the output characteristics is plotted between VCE and IC. VCE and IC. So this output characteristic is plotted for different values of this particular base current IB like this. So here IB is equal to say 0 microampere, here IB is equal to say 10 microampere, here IB is equal to say 20 microampere, here IB is equal to say 30 microampere, here IB is equal to say 40 microampere. So for the different values of IB, we are plotting the output characteristics that is the value of VCE versus IC. So this is the basic output characteristic of this particular transistor. So now here, now here what we have to do is that we have to now plot something referred to as the load line of this output cara. So here in order to plot a load line we have to now observe this particular loop. 
So here, what we observe is that this particular voltage VCC, this gets divided into two parts. This gets divided into VCE and this gets divided into ICRC. So this particular voltage VCC gets divided into two parts, that is VCE and ICRC. So therefore, according to Kirchhoff's law, we know for a fact that VCC would be equal to the sum of these two divided parts, that is VCE plus ICRC. Let us take this as equation number one. So now, in order to plot the load line, we have to find the two extreme values of this particular equation. So here, we know that this particular VCC and RC, these two are constants. So the only variables here are VCE and IC. So first condition, let us take when IC is equal to zero. So when the value of IC is equal to zero, we know that VCC is, becomes equal to VCE because this particular term becomes zero. So therefore, let this, let us take this as point number A. Now, when this VCE is equal to zero, when the value of this VC is equal to zero, what we observe is that VCC is equal to ICRC. So therefore, the value of IC is equal to VCC by RC. Let us take this as point number B. So here, what we observe is that one point, point number A, is when the value of VCE is equal to VCC. So let that be this particular point. And the second point is when the value of IC is equal to VCC by RC. So let, let us take this as point number B, that is VCC by RC. So therefore, a DC load line is just a straight line which connects these two points. This is simply what you refer to as a DC load line, where the slope of this particular DC load line is simply equal to minus one by RC. This is simply what you refer to as a DC load line. So now the intersection of this particular DC load line with the base current IB are the Q points or the operating points of this particular transistor. So this can be a particular Q point, this can be a particular Q point, this can be a particular Q point. So a Q point or an operating point is the intersection of the load line with this particular base current IB. So what the Q point tells us is that it tells us the operating parameters of this particular transistor. That is because it tells us the operating voltage, what voltage is it operating at and the operating current at a particular base current. So therefore, if I'm taking this operating point, then this tells us that this particular transistor is operating in such a way that it has VC is equal to, if this is say some voltage, three volt, then here we can say that this particular transistor is operating at a point where VC is equal to three volt and IC is equal to say, 5 milliampere and IB is equal to 20 milliampere. So we get the operating parameters of this particular transistor. That is what you refer to as a Q point or an operating point. And the most important thing to note is that this particular Q point will always be in the active region of this particular BJT. So now, if we're talking about the stability of this particular Q point, what we observe is that with the change in temperature, the operating point also would change because the device parameters, they also get changed. So therefore, because of the change in temperature, this particular operating point would also change. Thus, the designed biasing current should provide stability in such a way that even if there's a change in temperature, that would be very minimum change in the operating point of this particular transistor. So the stability of this operating point is given by the stability factor S. So this stability factor S indicates a change in operating point, the change in temperature. As simple as that guys. 
So this thus gives you a clear idea of what you refer to as transistor biasing and why we need transistor biasing and how we can amplify a particular time varying signal with the help of transistor biasing and what you refer to as a DC load line and what you refer to as a Q point or an operating point of a particular transistor along with the stability of the operating point of a particular transistor. As simple as that guys. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as transistor biasing. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.